where Lee Chess plays on this Sunday. Let's get it going here. As usual, we got a lot of challenges. Let's start working through them. DDR, pretty strong player here. 22-11 up first. Let's open with D4. They got the question mark. That's always scary. <laughs> oh, but we played before. Okay, interesting. So they play B6. Let's go E4. I'll play Bishop D3. I like to play flexibly against this and not commit the knight to C3 yet. What's up to all our viewers on YouTube and Twitch? Oh, the YouTube chat is active here. Hello, Alexander. Also, Raspan. Hello, John Stevenson. Good to see you. Okay, I'll play C3 here. I think this is how you want to handle this. Keep everything together. Yeah, 50 plus challenges already. That's right. Okay, this looks like a bit of a suspicious approach for my opponent. Let's give a check here. Let's see how they respond to that. Maybe bishop c6 will be played. Maybe my move was not the best. Okay, but they play knight c6. Now knight e5 looks awfully tempting. Getting up here causing problems. I could see all these points being weak for black. <clears throat> So hopefully I can capitalize. <clears throat> queen a4, queen f3. All these must come to mind. Let's, let's take here first. Take on d5. What's up, yo-yo? Says, this is my eighth Sunday attempting to get my challenge accepted. Wow, okay. <laughs> I hope you get a game. I really do. Let's castle. Wasn't anticipating queen takes d5, but interesting move. Hmm. Maybe queen a4, c4 tempting, but I think black can actually take here if I do that. I feel like I'm letting black defend in a position that should be substantially worse for them. Let's play queen a4. Hello, Duffman. Good to see you. Reading Soaking Wet Sai says, how's it going? It's going well. Yeah, nice Sunday here. Rather mild, which we will definitely take. It's been really cold in the past weeks. All right, A6. Should I trade everything off or should I take here? So if I take A6, I think black goes rook A8, but then I can take on B7 and then take C6. So I do believe this actually checks out. Very important to keep in mind, we don't want any circumstance where the knight jumps and black threatens mate on g2, right? So, yeah, let's take. Sorry, I'm still adjusting my webcam slightly. That looks all right. Okay, they do take. Goes back. All right, well, this is a positive development. I've won a pawn. Queen b5, maybe. Let's go there. Bishop f4. Did bishop d6 maybe take here? I'm thinking. Yeah, let's just trade. Take on c6. Black might just take back, but then we can get into some end game where I'm up pawn. Just play this fast. Play quickly and try to convert. Hello, Ib981. Tafaska says, good players celebrate every little advantage. You have to, right? Because you never know when that advantage is going to evaporate. <laughs> Hello, Greg Connor says, greetings from Nova Scotia. Yeah, thank you for tuning in. All right, John, let's convert this. Come on. Let's do it. It's not going to be simple. Black can put up some resistance here for sure. Let's go rook a4. I need to bring my king over gradually. That's what I want to do. Play like this. I'm thinking I send my king all the way over to c2 if I'm able. I don't know if I'll get there, but... Black might push h3. 
That wouldn't be an uncommon decision in this day and age. I feel like people are more apt to move their H pawns all the way down the board. Play here. Ooh, this almost works. If I take with the rook, there'd be this and this, but fortunately I can take with the knight still. All right. Um, let's challenge Black's knight right away. Now go here. Actually, black could have played rook takes b2 when I played knight e3. But no matter. Let's just keep playing fast. <clears throat> They're trying to blockade. Doing a pretty good job of it so far. This is going to be a time battle here at the end. Don't think black can take on a5. I think that would be a one. Ah, uh, maybe now they can. Now they can. I'm going to flag my opponent. I have to do it. <laughs> they played a good game, but that doesn't mean I won't flag them. Rook d6, Rook d4. Yeah. <laughs> they were putting up good defense there. That was interesting. So, yeah, at the moment I played knight e3, this actually works now, doesn't it? Rook takes b2, Rook takes b2, Knight takes c3. Or does it? Does it not work? Oh, plus four. Why is that? The knight gets trapped? Check, and then knight c4. Obviously, I saw all this. <laughs> Just kidding. That's, sar that's sarcasm. I know sarcasm is hard on the internet. Uh, but yeah, I guess the knight is in trouble after this. Interesting. And what about the opening? I really didn't think that d5 move was any good, but I would recommend when playing against the Fianchetto like this, don't commit to knight c3 so quickly. So many people put the knight here, and then they get pinned with bishop b4. Actually, at the amateur level, you know what happens a lot is people just straight up blunder the e4 pawn against this e6, b6 setup. They just do something like this, and then they play bishop d2 or insert some other move that <clears throat> allows black to eventually pick this up. But if you play this bishop d3 move first, move the bishop out before the knight, and then knight f3... Black doesn't have a pin if they play bishop e4. Okay, thanks to my opponent for the game. Let's keep going here. Hey, Cormac, I saw you challenge pretty, pretty early, Cormac. I think you were the first one to challenge today, even though this is a random selection. Hello, Popo CSGO says, John, on Lee Chess Plays on February 13th, that was last week, right? You were asked... What opening slash gambit you most enjoy beating? You never answered. So what's your answer? You most enjoy beating. Hmm. You know, nowadays I have to say it's the Stafford. I think it's the Stafford gambit. Because it's just got so incredibly popular. You have to have a weapon against it. And I think I have a pretty good one in the uh, D4 idea that I show a lot of my students and I've showed you guys on Lee Chess Plays. So maybe we'll even get that today at some point. So I'd say Stafford Gambit. <laughs> All right, knight here, e3. By the way, Lee Chess ended up raising over $11,000, 11K USD for Turkey and Syria relief. For Medicine Sun Frontier, Doctors Without Borders. And thanks to everyone once again who donated in the past week. There were several streamers who did streams, including myself, to help raise funds. And that was an enormous amount of money raised. I was I was blown away by your guys' generosity. It was really cool. And shout out to Lee Chess for arranging for so many streamers in the past week. I saw they even got Peter Svidler to do it. Did you guys catch Peter the other day? Can't remember exactly which day he streamed on, but a wild Peter Svidler appeared. <laughs> you can find that in the videos portion on uh, Twitch and also in the archive on YouTube, I would imagine. Okay, so I'm doing this little re knight repositioning. I like this in this variation. Let's play Queen E2. Connect the rooks.
Yeah, thank you all about the hero. It was thanks to you guys. People were extremely generous to support that relief effort. Okay, now I think is the time to break with E4. Let's do it. Alternatively, maybe B4 was interesting, trying to play on the queen side, but I'm going to look to break in the center. John Carter says, England, I just love crushing their dreams. Uh -huh. Let me think of some other gambits. Ooh, what's up with this move? Isn't that blunder upon? I'm trying to think of some other gambits that I enjoy trying to take down. Uh, I feel like the England, it's such a bad gambit that it's almost like not even a fair fight. At least Stafford's like interesting, as in if <clears throat> White plays some logical moves, they can easily like wind up in a bad position or lose. England, I feel, yeah, there's a few trap lines, but it's relatively easy for White to dodge a lot of the truly fun, fun looking stuff. Oh, so this was Black's idea. Interesting. Let's go here. He's going to take with the knight, I guess. And now I probably have to try to do something dynamic. So let's go here. Yeah, exactly, Godzinsko. What do you guys like playing against Gambit-wise? I'll tell you Gambits that are tough to play against, in my opinion. Um, I think the Budapest and also the Albin Counter Gambit are tough, speaking from a D4 player's perspective. Engine hates those lines, especially the Albin, I think. <clears throat> but practically speaking, they can be challenging. Uh, what else? I think there's some lines of this uh, like Tarash Gambit that are interesting. Forgot the exact uh, name of that variation I'm thinking of. Within E4, there's some Gambits that are not even really Gambits, like the Marshall, the Marshall Gambit. Just a high-quality opening. Yeah, Hennig Shara Gambit. That's right, Mr. Giga. Hennig Shara Gambit. I think that's actually a pretty good weapon in fast time controls. Okay, so I feel like I'm better here, but Cormac is creating some issues. I need to be careful. I'm way up on the clock, though. Ooh, highly weakening move here. I see the point. I do see the point, but I feel like Cormac's going to run into some problems on this long diagonal. Should I just play e6? Open this up, and if takes, I can I can drop my knight back. Let's go after the queen. Yeah, we'll go check. The old dippity do, knight <laughs> knight retreat. Okay, thank you, Cormac. Yeah, I was actually uncertain what your idea was, but probably should have been apparent to me that you were trying to go knight g four. So it, it didn't approve of your f four move, which makes sense. But my reply was also dubious. D takes E5. It says I should just go back right away, probably because of what you did. Yeah, interesting. I guess I don't have a lot of advice to offer. I mean, maybe maybe trade queens. Probably technically correct. Like, you did dance around with your queen a little bit. Honestly, I think this is a pretty good line for white. I do like this knight repositioning, even if the engine doesn't totally approve. But we're talking about two-tenths of a pawn difference, right? Really nothing. But yeah, you probably should trade queens here. Thanks for the game. All right, Mouse Lover. Let's do it. Max Warmerdam has a chessable course on that. Uh huh. Yeah. So he advocates that. The Hennig Shara Gambit. Duffman says, as an ex Budapest Gambit player, seeing my opponent look deflated OTB when I know the line's 25 plus moves deep. It's different. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Yeah, Budapest is a pretty good one. Don't forget about the halibut gambit. There's a halibut gambit? I learned something new today. Did we reach the fundraising goal? We did, yes. We surpassed 10,000 USD raised. I want to say it was like 11,000 something was the total. Maybe one of the mods knows the exact number.
Halibut Gambit is C4, C5, B4. C4, C5, B4. That seems terrible. <laughs> Probably why I didn't know about that. It's named because it belongs at the bottom of the sea. <laughs> okay. I like that. I play the Belgrade Gambit OTB and Crush folks. Nobody talks about the Belgrade. <clears throat> yeah, the Belgrade Gambit requires some cooperation though, right? That's in the Four Knights. Where you're like, you're heading for Fortnite Scotch, you play D4, they go E takes D4, then you play Knight D5. Is that right? I think I actually played against that from the black side in a tournament game one time. It is a little tricky, for sure. Okay, we'll take. And then I think after white recaptures, I'll play Rook C8, look for Knight E5. Attack the queen, attack the pawn. Okay, now here, I feel like I almost have a tactic because this diagonal is weak, clearly. So let's play knight b4. White has to stick around with their queen. I think only queen d2 is playable here. I control c2. So on queen d2, I'm probably going to try to punch through with d5. This move feels absolutely correct and in the spirit of the position. Before white gets a chance to play bishop b2, we want to break this open. And try to get at that rook on a1. If you pause for a moment, if I play some casual move like a6, white gets to solve their issues. So I'm trying to capitalize on this pin right now. What about the Halloween Gambit? Uh, yeah, Halloween Gambit's interesting. I have played that one. Ooh, bishop a3? Interesting reply. Interesting. So if I take, we trade queens, but then white plays this. I could take on b4 at that point. Looks intriguing. Um, You know what? In the spirit of Lee Chess plays, let's go for it. Looks interesting. I play it. That's all there is to it. Take. Now, if white plays rook fc1 to defend the knight, they run into b2. If they go rook c1, rook a1 to c1, then I'll probably play b2 anyways. Okay, takes there. Hmm. Okay, many things hanging at this point. Taking here. Ah, this is this is probably the move. Yeah, let's take here. We could have a little domino effect. But you know what I'm going to do? When white plays rook takes a1 back here, I am not going to take the bishop. I'm going to play b2. Unless I find some massive problem with this move. But b2, rook c1. Right? And... We can ignore the bishop due to the severity of the rook c1 idea and the strength of the b pawn. Don't forget the Evans gambit, super sharp. Yeah, Evans is a high quality gambit. Probably not on par with the martial defense or something like that. But still quite challenging. Supreme of this hits the pawns and also the bishop. Yeah, thanks to the game, Mouse Lover. We played before, right? We played one game in the past. Yeah. You're pretty good. I can tell um, you're underrated in Blitz. For sure. All right, thank you for the game. Let's have a quick look. I am kind of curious. Bishop A3 I thought was a good try. It might be your only way of mustering up some counterplay because, yeah, d5, is this the best move for black? Yep. b5, also an idea to keep in mind here. I kind of like d5 because it introduced some tension. But, again, if I, if I play something casual, like right at the moment, white plays b3. Like if I go a6, you see how the eval now normalizes for white? You got to strike. You got to strike quickly in these situations. It actually wants me to go d5 here. It says this is even better. Try to open the D file as well. Maybe knight e5 is a thing. So that's interesting. And what about when we get here? It says a5 is good. Okay, it also does approve of this. Bishop takes b4. I take on b3. 
I should have mentioned if white takes here, we could have this, right? And if white takes on a7 at the end, I have rook takes b3 to stay up upon. So bishop takes e7 is correct. Huh. Wants me to go rook d7 or rook e8 here. Attack the bishop. Ah, and then once we get to this point, the only good move for white is to play a takes b3. How about that? <laughs> Eliminate the b-pawn. Don't even worry about the bishops both hanging because after a takes b3, if I take the bishop, white takes back. Again, white's still going to be down a pawn. Or no, they're not. This is actually equal material. Ah, yeah, because white has a four versus three over here. Balancing out the two versus one. Wow. That would be a nice little calculation exercise. So, you know, try to anticipate how the game is going to... I'm conjuring up a problem that I might pose to my students or something. How should the game go after D takes C4 from this position? This is pretty forced. White's got to trade queens. Knight's under attack. They got to take my knight and defend. I got to take here to create this threat. There's some options at this point, but... Very interesting, and I think that's a tough move at the end in a blitz game. Makes sense, though. Makes a lot of sense because of the strength of the B-pawn. All right, thanks for the game, Mouse Lover. Let's keep rolling here. Alex Rosencrantz, good luck to you. We've played one game in the past. Thanks for being a Lee Chess patron. Alex, are you there? Guess not. Can always re-challenge. We'll go on to the next player here, Tatterhood. Good luck to you. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. By the way, we have 142 watching on YouTube. How many on Twitch? I should pull up the Twitch. 183. Excellent. All right, let's play Scandinavian. Maybe I'll play a modern Scandinavian with Knight F6. Speaking of gambits... Okay, we'll go Icelandic Gambit, E6. Yeah, that was a nice series of tactics, wasn't it? The possibilities there. I remember briefly looking at this a long time ago. Actually, I've mostly played C6 in this position rather than E6. But there's some interesting ideas here. I think now, do I want to go Queen E7 or Bishop C5? I'm going to go bishop c5. I think queen e7 is also an idea. But let's target f2. Portuguese gambit. Yeah, this is a gambit you can get out of the modern Scandinavian, the Portuguese. Go here. Stop d4. I wonder if White's in time now to play bishop e2, though, and try to get castled. Mm -hmm. So let's think. How, I'm gonna, how am I going to generate counterplay out of this? Taking on f2 doesn't look justified. If I go knight g4, fishing pole style, looks a little sketchy, but I'm going to play it. Looks interesting. And now I would expect castles, maybe knight e4 to hit the bishop and defend f2, but probably castles. And you know what I might play after castles? This might surprise some of you, but I think I'm going to play a6. I'm going to go a6. Idea being if knight a4, I want to keep my bishop on this long diagonal. That said, I see a big problem with this. I think Tatterhood is significantly better if they find a certain move. Okay, and they did not find it. Let's go h5. I'll present this as a quiz to you guys. You can think about it for the analysis. What should white play here to try to get a big advantage? Well, maybe the move I was thinking of doesn't actually work. But okay, we'll find out afterwards. All right, now, how to play this? Probably here. Take my knight. Gonna try to castle this way. I 
I also know also play the wing gambit in the French. Uh-huh. Yeah, there's some interesting gambits in the French. Milner Berry Gambit as well. Okay, knight g5. Reasonable. So castling seems pretty obvious here. Anything else I'd like to consider? Of course, I'm being pretty aggressive with that knight. Mm. Could take f2, but that's not exactly what you want to do in these positions. Might be the best move, though, at this point. What if I go here now? Oh, yeah, we got, we got to play queen d6, right? I'm threatening queen h2 mate. We have to try it. Take. Renew the threat. Because the thing is, g3 does not help white, right? Because queen takes. Ooh, and Tatterhood missed the threat. Yeah, that, that attack was sketchy. Even though I won in 13 moves, I cannot endorse the way that I played that, tack, that uh, attack. So I was actually thinking d4 was the move here, but I don't think it works. Yeah, d3 is the best move for one of them. But for a moment, I thought this was winning further material for white because knight takes d4, knight takes d4, unveils a double attack here. But I can take with the queen. And then I defend the knight. Very dubious play, John. Yeah. You know, I, I'm a strategic player. I like my positional game. So when I try to attack, it comes off awkward sometimes. <laughs> I'm fully willing to admit. That being said, like I do have good success if I just commit to the attack fully. Um, but only against lower rated players. <laughs> if you play like this over the board especially against players of my rating. Your rating's going, going, to, going to tank. Yeah, so apparently you should take with the bishop here, try to keep this file closed. And I can see how that works out well, because after h takes g4, among other things, you could take on e6 and then play probably queen takes g4, but there's also this. It starts to look bad. So thanks for the game, Tatterhood. Yeah, this is the Icelandic Gambit. E6, bishop takes E6, characterized by that. And queen E7, this is a, a major idea here. And almost regardless of how white responds to this move, black has bishop takes C4 is the thing. There's queen E2, I guess, if this take here. But then I can go knight C6. Black often castles long here. All right, thanks again for the game. Melkyra, ooh, 2470. From Norway. All right. All right. Let's play knight f3. Good luck, Melkyra. d6. Um, all right. Let's play e4, offering a transposition to various openings. Let's see what happens. Maybe gambit theme stream. That would be interesting. Let's play a4 here. Gain some space. Gain further space. Should I kick my opponent back further? Nah, let's just play bishop f3. I feel like the space that I've gained with these, these pawns should be handy. Ooh, this knight though. Wait a minute. Where's your knight going? Magnus Smurf account? You never know, right? I almost feel bad for the high-rated players from Norway because anytime you play one of them online and you see that Norwegian flag, you know, they probably have to deal with Magnus questions or people thinking that they're Magnus. It's a high standard to live up to. All right, take. <clears throat> so I'm up material. Just be a little cautious. There's a double attack here, so maybe they're going to argue that they're going to win something back. That being said, e7 is weak. So let's let's think here for a second. Queen d3, maybe. Yeah, I think I like the look of queen d3. Take. And then take here. Seems to check out. Retreat. You offer a trade now. Okay. I'll take you up on that. And 
Let's play. Let's play bishop here. So just got to watch these outside pawns. Black does have two bishops. So let's make sure we're converting this correctly. Hmm. I think I'm going to go here. This seems appealing. Solidifies d5. There, I'll step back. Sometimes when the opponent's down material, you have to deal with like a short-term initiative that they may have. So I'm just trying to... Wait. That's almost a problem for their queen. Ah, you know what? G4. G4 wins a piece here, doesn't it? I again get their minor piece with a pawn. Mm-hmm. Pause to reflect says, I could be the only viewer who'd be interested in this, but would you consider trying 5 plus 0? I like your instructive commentary, and 5 plus would provide more time for it. That is true, but to keep things going and to try to maximize the number of games, we've decided on 3 0, which I think is a good time control. But, you know, I am inclined to agree. The longer, the better for uh, instructional value, for sure. If you're interested in that sort of thing, especially like rapid games, even. Check out my YouTube channel. I constantly post longer games that I played at various rating levels, explaining my thought process. Bins, you need to hit 3,000 blitz this year. Now, I want to be 29.99, not 3,000. <laughs> the OG viewers will know. Yeah, black is busted here. Just trying to convert. All right, take. Queen d4. Threaten g5. All good. Let's go here. There's a check, but I can just come up. No problem. Knight's coming into e4. And let's just manage the time, shall we? Take f7. I think coming with the queen now. Looks nice. Knight takes f7 was also threatening mate on h8, so that would have been perfectly fine too. What's your guys' favorite time control to play? Speaking of various time controls. I go back and forth. I mean, there's some sometimes when I'm in a blitz mood, but I fully recognize that blitz is just for fun. All right. Thank you for the game to my opponent. But yeah, that's useful to think about. So my space advantage allowed me to cramp Black's pieces. The fact that Black had not traded any minor pieces this d7 square was a problem for them because that's where they would like to retreat their knight. But as soon as they played bishop d7, it allowed this b4 move. So it's kind of the effect of like having this pawn up here, cramps black, they can't play b5 so easily without ampassant or giving up the c6 square. d5 pawn's also nice. Hey, I got a 96% accuracy on that game. I'll take it. All right, thanks to my opponent. Strong player there. Zaid, good luck to you, 1635. Let's play a Sicilian. Kurek on YouTube likes 10-minute games. Lenny's plays 30-minute. Tom, hello, Tom Walker, says 5. Orion also likes 10-minute. 10, 10 plus 10 also, interesting. 1 plus 0 because you don't have to think. <laughs> 10 plus 5, 5 plus 3. Sounds like a lot of you guys like the increment games. Yeah. Okay, let me let me guys let me ask you guys a controversial question. So how many of you know what delay is? Time delay. I have to ask this question because we have a lot of online players 
And also, even if you do play tournaments, over the board tournaments, you may not play in a country where delay has like ever been a time control. Interesting to read your responses here. And my follow-up question is, what do you think about delay? Delay is when you wait for a British train. <laughs> delay is how much time before the clock starts. Exactly. So the way that delay works is when you play with time delay, there is like a grace period before your clock actually starts ticking down. So let's say you're playing... Um, a 10 minute game with a five second delay. Unlike an increment, which adds time at the end, the delay does not start your clock for five seconds, right? So as long as you make your move within five seconds, no time elapses on your clock. It's like this grace period. And when I was playing tournaments as a youngster, delay was super common. Like most of the tournaments use time delay. I don't remember increment being that popular. It's only... I'd say about in the past 20 years, that increment has become a thing. So delay, on the other hand, has always been um, an option. Uh, let's go here. But I'm curious if you guys have an opinion about that, if you have any experience with these time controls. One second, guys. All right, sorry about that, guys. Speaking of delay, <laughs> I had someone coming to my door delivering a package, but although it had my uh, house number on it, it was not a package I was expecting, nor was it addressed to me. But yeah, anyways, delay is interesting, and in some ways, you could argue it's actually more fair because with delay you can actually still get pretty low on the clock and never regain that time. With increment, you can always like recoup that time, right? And build up. And hence, you see a lot of like theoretically winning end games that go on and on and on. And the stronger side, even if they get down to seconds, they sometimes feel pretty secure because they know that they always have that, that ability to build up the time. Okay, so I'm picking up a pawn here. Fortunately, that person didn't come to my door when I was in a time scramble. That would have been a tough decision. Let's go here. Oh, yeah, I saw that draw offer, but <laughs> I definitely can't take that one. This bishop is too strong. But I, I do think it would be interesting if some sites like offered delay as an option. I, I would love to play some online games with, with time delay. So Lee Chess, Tebow, if you're if you're watching this, maybe think about it. Oh yeah, speaking of delay versus increment. So this is a, a two second increment. Yeah. Please do challenge the 3 plus 0 in the future. Knight d1. Mm. It's 
play f4. Really cement that bishop in there. Hey, thank you, one big kid, by the way. Appreciate that, that message. Because they've been a fan for five years. That's a long time, man. Thank you. Come down here. So I'm really dragging out this pin, right? Because why not? White has to go back now. All right, so we're in such a dominating position here. There's a variety of things I could do. Should I walk my king in? Let's do it. Maybe I should have played h4 first, technically. I'm trying to put white in the Suk Have I played the Luke.ai bot? No, I haven't. Yeah. I saw that chess.com came out with that, but no, I haven't played it. I, I don't I don't know what I'm supposed to do with this piece of information. <laughs> Zaid putting me on the spot here. <laughs> Am I supposed to take mercy? We can't do that. <laughs> Oh, now I get to go here, maybe. Or should I do this one? Let's do this one. Because it opens the H file. This is a beautiful position. <laughs> March the king in. Okay, now I have to take the rook at long last. I must capture. Oh, but I can take here. and Get the direct win with rook C1 coming. And then checkmate. Thanks for the game. Appreciate it, Zaid. Yeah, so that dark square bishop was too much of a problem. Yeah, I think white's already kind of struggling in this middle game. Lack of space. Black has this pawn cemented on d4. So probably f3 should be avoided, but I understand why white played that because f5 is coming. So, Zaid, I would say maybe look for a different weapon against the Sicilian. This setup you played with bishop c4, d3, bishop g5, you're playing a lot of logical moves. If there's one move I would pinpoint that got you into trouble, it's probably bishop takes f6. Don't give away your bishops for knights without good cause here. Thanks for the game. Rook takes e2, led to mate earlier? Probably, actually, yeah. I was maybe enjoying my position too much. But you're right. Like anywhere around here, I could have played this. <laughs> and then rook, rook c1. You're absolutely right. All right. Thanks again for the game. Daya, 1689. Good luck to you. Orion says, not sure it works at my age. Come on, John. Don't you know I'm 42? <laughs> I hear you, man. Okay, let's play. Let's play e5. Mm -hmm. Go knight c6. This is all mainline Spanish. Ooh, okay, so at this point, I should take on e4 because white didn't play rook e1. They jumped the gun a little bit with c3. So knight takes e4 is now acceptable. Why is your camera angle different for YouTube videos? Uh, what do you mean? This should be pretty much the same. The size of the camera is a little bit different compared to like when I play on chess.com but otherwise should pretty, be pretty much identical. Oh, thank you. Appreciate that. Someone commenting on YouTube. You like the educational streams? Yeah, I appreciate it. Um, let's play bishop d6 here. In theory, I'd like to play queen d3 and black white from going d4, but that's going to be tough because my queen can't hop over my bishop so 
that would violate the principles of chess. Let's just play bishop f5. Feels like a marshal without the pawn sacrifice. Exactly. Yeah, that's how I feel about this too. Yeah. Didn't you move recently? Guy was probably watching old videos. I hope not, man. <laughs> I hope not. Thank you, casual player. All right, let's play. Let's play g5. We'll go g5. Do I want to take here? I'm not sure about that. Let's play it because it slightly weakens white's king. I've also somewhat weakened my king, but with the various trades that have happened here, I still feel pretty safe. So we'll come up and defend, defend from d5. I can see my username, and I'm also here in chat. Almost feels like I'm spying on the game. Wait, do I see you in the chat? I don't know what your username is, so... Um, as of now, I don't, but where can I find your courses? Well, I have a YouTube channel. If you want to check that out, you can just search my name, John Bartholomew on YouTube. I frequently play on, uh, Lee chess, also chess.com. I have some courses I've made. If you're specifically asking about courses on chessable. I'm threatening uh, queen takes e5. Beware. White is still in the game here, but not after that move, because, yeah, this alignment is going to get them. I jinxed Daya. All right. I almost hit rematch for some reason. I wanted to click analysis board. Yeah, so this is a common move order mistake, c3. So generally, after black has played bishop e7 in particular, you got to watch knight takes e4. So hence why white usually plays rook e1 here. And at the moment, white defends the e-pawn. Now white is threatening to take c6 and take e5, like looking to scoop black's e-pawn. So this would be a time for black to play b5, kick the bishop back. Then black can castle, or they can play d6. Those are by far the most common moves. Ton of theory from here. d6 is the closed Re Lopez. Castles leaves open the option for the Marshall Gambit, which someone in chat correctly pointed out the game ended up looking like. This is one of the most high-quality Gambits out there. Most of the games at the highest level in this Gambit end in draws. Black sacrifices a pawn, but they have moves like bishop d6, queen h4, pressure against the king side coming. So you can go down the rabbit hole of theory if you want. Actually a pretty interesting gambit, but it's been heavily, heavily mapped out by engines. But yeah, C3, not the most accurate move order. But I think Dio was doing all right, maybe up through C4. Felt like C4 was a little loose. Actually, the engine has Dio like slightly better at this point. Knight takes E4. Okay. Yeah, pretty much level. Pretty much level. Wants you to play queen f2 here. Interesting. It wants me to go f6, probably because you have problems with this. <laughs> All right, thank you for the game. Ivan Filipov, 1886. Let's do it. Imagine your Frank Marshall sitting on this gambit for years just for Capablanca to beat you the first time you use it. Yes, that's uh, <laughs> that's the famous story attached to the Marshall gambit, indeed. Frank Marshall used it against Capablanca, unleashed this, this novelty, this fantastic gambit that's still in use, and Capablanca was able to refute it, or at least the line that they played into it, into, into at the board. Capablanca figured it out. That's not to say the whole gambit is bad by any means. We just got done saying how, how strong it is. But you can look up that game if you're curious. Okay, I got to be a little careful here because these positions can drift if you allow knight e5 and 
the subsequent, like white's probably going to play queen e1. If you allow too much play here, especially connected to the knight jump, then black can easily get in trouble. So I think on this move, I'm actually going to play bishop f5. Now I'm going to go bishop f5 here. Accepting the doubled pawns, but trust me, players who play this setup, ooh, I don't think this is a good move. Players who play this setup, they don't like to see bishop f5 because they, they want their e4 square protected. And now I'm going to take here. I wonder how long did they follow modern theory? I think for a decent ways in that game. Yeah, decent ways. There's been improvements for black that have been found, of course, but definitely check that game out if you're curious. <clears throat> hey, John, do you think Fisher random classical chess will be a thing in the short future? In the short future, definitely not. I don't see any indication that that would be a format people would want to play over normal classical chess. In the long run, also, I'm pretty skeptical of the appeal of Fisher random. I mean, I think... If Fisher Random were to get popular, it would have happened already. It seems like whenever there's a big Fisher Random event, you have various top players saying they're interested in it, they would like to play it more, and then like nothing happens. <laughs> and then they have the Fisher Random World Championship again like the next year, and they say the same things. <laughs> I mean, it's not like the players themselves can easily organize tournaments, but... Like they, I just see that cycle playing out like year after year when it comes to Fisher Random. Which is also like chess 960 for all intents and purposes. I think the thing is for me... And I, I would bet many of you feel the same way, although I, I can only speak for myself. Chess, normal chess itself is difficult and fascinating enough. Like, I don't think we're anywhere close to exhausting our understanding and enjoyment, especially, of traditional chess. And Fisher Random just feels like a more frustrating version of an already fascinating game to me. <laughs> That's how I mostly feel about it. Because you often start with these extremely awkward positions, right? Where the coordination is poor and the first part of the game is just dealing with that poor coordination and trying to work out of it. Okay, white gunning for checkmate here. We are not going to oblige. Let's play h6. John, would really like to see a fundamentals on breaking up middle game log jams, like maybe pawn breaks. Yeah, I do have a chess fundamentals video on my YouTube channel on pawn breaks specifically. So you could check that out if you haven't already. Let's give a check here. Maybe it's awkward because we are used to normal chess. That could definitely be it, part of the reason. Wow, there's like almost a perpetual idea for white after this, knight g5. Don't think it quite works, but I'm actually going to step here to try to avoid it. <laughs> That's what I was going Oh, someone's stream sniping. <laughs> Yvonne. Naughty, naughty. Stream sniping. All right, let's, uh, let's go here. Or do I have some other way of playing? Rookie two is interesting. Rookie two might be a good move. Maybe I should play that. That looks, e that looks even easier. Allow knight takes g6, but then king h7. Mm -hmm. Let's give a check. Come back and take this knight too, but I'll play for checkmate. Okay, thank you for the game, Yvonne. 
I think your delay of the knight e5 move was a little questionable. Like here, h3, I think you should just play knight e5 right away. Let's see what the computer thinks. Wow, it actually likes black at this point already by a pretty good margin too. Interesting. Yeah, I didn't expect a minus one evaluation here. Because let's say you play knight e5. So it's just so easy to go astray if you panic about this knight coming in. So I was going to play bishop f5 like I did in the game and try to contest that bishop. But let's say I take d takes or f takes. Engine says d takes, but f takes would be more standard. Yeah, I guess even here I'm safe enough because queen h4 is prevented. But this bishop being loose, this bishop pointed at h7, the f file being open. Black has to be careful. So if you can like counter them by maybe um, asking a question to the light square bishop, contesting the e4 square, I found that tends to work better in these situations. But yeah, e4, I think tactical mistake on your part, Yvonne. Allows for this diagonal pressure. All right, thanks for the game. Remy 64, let's play knight f3. I wonder who will win the world championship, Ding or Jan. I have no clue. I would actually be curious how, um, how they're laying the betting line in that match. Do we even know who's the favorite? Has Vegas weighed in? I mean, we know who's the rating favorite. Actually, I don't even know. I think Ding is still higher, but let's check. D-Day ratings. Ding is still, didn't have the best tournament recently. He's still 27.88. Oh, Jan is actually higher now, 27.93. So Jan is five points higher than Ding at the moment, 27.93 to 27.88. And I guess with Jan's match experience, like maybe that gives him the slight nod. Should we play aggressive here? Let's go e4. Let's offer this pawn. But I don't know. I mean, I think they're pretty evenly matched. But Ding hasn't looked that impressive since the candidates, right? I mean, he's barely played. And his last event really left a lot to be desired. Uh, Tata Steel. Should I play d6 or rook e1? Let's go D6. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Nepo was dominant in the candidates. So I guess if I had to choose, like, probably Jan. But, um, of course, Ding should not be underestimated. But I wish we had a little more information to go off of in this match about um, who's going to be in form. But now I think they're in their training camps at this point, probably not playing before the World Championship, which is coming up soon. So I'm a little surprised my opponent just gave the piece back right away. Let's give a check. They're going to play Bishop E7. And what to do after that? Do I have some fancy knight move here? Ooh, I see an interesting move, guys. I see it. Nah, I don't think it's so great, though. I was thinking about knight d4. Knight d4, bishop takes g2, knight f5, but <laughs> I've definitely had better ideas than that. Huh. I feel like I should, I should have some means of keeping the attack going, but I'm not seeing it. Bishop g5, f6 h4 or something looks a little vague i'm just gonna develop i guess yeah it starts in april the world championship april 7th this is atc faust yeah i mean that's that's coming up real fast less than two months i mean it's kind of shaping up to be a severely underhyped world championship right like, they didn't have a, a venue secure, a sponsor, until about a month ago. Obviously, you know, big news, Magnus not defending.
I mean, you hate to see that, but it's kind of this confluence of factors that, although I'm sure when it happens and we get the games and we're into the into the flow of it, it's going to seem more exciting, but there's little to no hype going on at the moment. Yeah, exactly, ATC Faust, yeah. Take with the bishop, hit the rook. Feels like the last world championship happened just yesterday. <laughs> you sound like someone who's in their 30s or 40s or beyond. <laughs> Sherlock. <laughs> That's what I frequently tell myself these days about certain events that happened one, three, five, ten or more years in the past. I'm like, that just happened yesterday. <laughs> Sherlock says, I cannot confirm or deny. <laughs> uh, Lenny with the contrarian takes says, I'm hyped for it personally. There's no heavy favorite like all the matches with Magnus defending. Ooh, I got to watch my time here. Yeah, you got a good point. I mean, it's, um, it's up in the air. But Magnus, he always influences the narrative when he's involved, right? Just such a dominant player. So always there was that question, like, who's going to take him down? Which we're finally getting an answer to. I guess the answer is himself. <laughs> he took himself out. All right, Remy resigns. Yeah, thanks for the game. I wonder if that gambit was sound. I think knight c6 allowing d5 is not so great. Like, that's kind of a given. Does look like e4 is good, so is d6. Yeah, seems like a tough position. So if you move the knight, I was thinking I was going to play rook e1. Uh, let's say you go knight f5. Rook e1. Knight takes d6. Yeah, and you're going to get hit with moves like knight g5, opening up multiple attackers there, f3. Bishop takes d6 as well. Knight g5. So, yeah, I think... Looking tough. So don't play knight c6 in this opening with the tension here. Almost always, you want to take that pawn on d4, much like a Sicilian. All right, thanks for the game. 75 challenges here still. Emperor, you're up next. Thanks again, everyone, for tuning in. We are into the second half of the stream. Still an hour to go, so stay tuned. Thanks to Lee Chess once again for putting on these streams every week. Check out all the features on Lee Chess. I'm sure almost all of you know this, but... Uh, for the new players out there, Lee Chess is completely free to play on and pledges to always be free. There are no advertisements. It's not free to run, but if you're inclined to donate and you enjoy the community, you find value, or you just want to support in general, um, definitely take a look at the community tab and then donate down here. A nice little perk. If you donate, you get the little wings next to your name. <laughs> Lee Chess patron. What's the catch? You know, it's cliche, but I don't think there's a catch. <laughs> You're supporting an amazing organization and a passionate group of people who want to uh, maintain a high-quality chess site for free. Tom says, I use Lee Chess for teaching. Nice tools. Yeah, I love it. I do, I do almost all my teaching on Lee Chess these days as well. A little bit on chess.com, but the Lee Chess study feature is unreal. If you guys haven't checked this out before, it is such a godsend for teaching, analyzing, organizing your analysis, annotating your games. Make use of that. Take. And queen b4. So we won the exchange. I'm just going to go after this and this. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's go rook f to b8. I'm going to try to go here and then maybe someday attack the a pawn. Rook up to b5. Yes, they do do a great job. c5, I'll go c4. I only donate to the human fund. 
that a Seinfeld reference? The human fun? Let's take here. Yeah, I like chess base as well. Uh, nowadays, though, I don't even think you really need chess base. Like the Lee Chess Study Tool does virtually everything that chess base does, which is a good piece of software, but it is paid software. I think a lot of people who use chess base have been doing it for years, I mean, decades even in some cases. But um, yeah, the Lee Chess Study Tool is phenomenal. B3? Guess I'm not threatening C2, but I'm threatening B2. And now I can go check. Go after the knight. Also, there's this. Is that coming in? All right. Thank you for the game, Emperor. Never quite recovered from allowing the bishop a6 move. Yeah, bishop a6. That's why I played the a5 advance looking for this. I think this position is a little tough for you because you don't have much of a central pawn presence. So probably, you know, you, D takes C5 even in the opening, I would criticize. Generally not the right call when, when you face C5 in the London. I'd recommend either D5 or reinforcing like E3. So D takes C5, unless you can hold that pawn, it, it tends to lead to a slightly worse position because black has the strong center, two center pawns versus one. You don't have to panic yet. Also another game where white gave away the bishop for the knight without real cause. So as much as knights are good in blitz, that doesn't mean early on in the game in particular, you should give your bishops away for them, um, especially if they haven't even kicked you with like a6 or something. Okay, thank you for the game. Albo, you're up next. John, do you have a lot of students? How do you prefer to organize your schedule? Oh, I should make a move. I'm waiting for Albo to move. Sorry about that, Albo. Um, at any given time, I probably have like 15 to 20 students. Yeah, fair amount. How do I prefer to organize my schedule also? I think for teaching, like I've been more or less a full-time teacher for um, about, I feel like playing a gambit here. Let's, let's go here and offer this. For about 10 years now. This is probably a terrible gambit, by the way. I would say for teaching, probably like three, three hours of teaching per day is ideal. That's not too long of a time commitment. And I think you can provide a ton of value at that, uh, that level of teaching. Beyond three, when you're getting into four, five, six, like that's where it gets really challenging, I think. It's just draining. And, and teaching is very labor inten uh, capital intensive. Not capital. Cognitive. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> Cognitively taxing. So I'd say two, three hours per day is probably ideal for private one-on-one -on -one coaching. Hey, what's up, Andre? Is it possible to join one of your courses? Dude, you're so strong. I don't know um, how much I could even, even teach you, Andre. <laughs> But I'm I'm flattered that you asked. John, how sharp is your hearing? Pretty decent, I think. Nothing absolutely special, but <laughs> nah, you're good, Duff, man. Okay, so black looks a little passive here. I'm already thinking about some sacrifices like this. Queen coming into C4. Not seeing anything amazing developing out of that. Knight E5, I think, would be a fine move here. G4 is kind of a wacky move that has some value, perhaps. Idea, bishop takes G4, bishop F7. 
I kind of want to play it because it's such a ridiculous move. I'm going to play it. Aw, oh, Black sniffed out the, the issue there. <laughs> Should I just start attacking now, H H4? Let's go for it. Yeah, someone on YouTube, I think it was Basid, asked, how sharp is my hearing? This could be a genius idea. Maybe Stockfish approved. Um, Immanetics asked, John, do you think it's worth paying for coaching slash improvement? Ooh, I can probably take here now. Maybe even on the previous. That would have been good on the previous move, actually. Take Queen E6. I'm going to do it now. And I think I'm going to be getting a checkmate out of this. Do you think it's worth paying for lessons slash coaching for a person who is just interested in improving but has no real prospects for being competitive at a high level? You know, certainly I think um, if you enjoy the game and you want to learn how to organize your time better, absolutely. Paying for some sessions with a coach makes sense. Even just as a time-saving mechanism, right? Like a good coach can really get to the heart of your issues and tell you what to spend your time on. Oh, and now here, I, I don't have queen f7, but I have knight takes h7 mate. Yeah, you know, this was all kicked off by the profound move g4. <laughs> I'm going to laugh so hard if Stockfish actually likes this. Do you guys think Stockfish is going to like it? This might be my uh, immortal game if it does. It just likes the banal knight g5. <laughs> oh, g4 is in the top five, though. Okay, we'll, we'll take it. We'll take it. Yeah, 90, 90, knight g5. Idea there, probably e6 and then g4. Well, we're just, we're just ahead of the curve, you know. That's why I play g4 on the first move instead of the second move in the sequence. Wow, that's kind of harsh. It gives me two question marks on this move. Because that's a uh, four and a half point swing. I had to double down with h4. Yeah, and here I already had this move. So this was partially the idea is like try to disturb this light square bishop because when this hits, I can get into e6 and you saw exactly what's going to happen. The queen and the knight coordinate so well together. Black is busted. Yeah. Okay, thanks for the game, Albo. I definitely think this is a pretty bad gambit by me. Queenie, I mean, Queenie 2, I think, is not a move you're going to find in the Masters database here. Yeah, no game found. I came up with a novelty at Master level of the, what, 4,700 games to reach this position. I'm sure this has been played on Lee Chess, though. Queenie 2. 82,000 games on Lee Chess with this. But yeah, I think queen takes d4 is just good for, for black hitting the knight. Don't play knight d7, right? This is a famous trap. Look how many tens of thousands of people. Well, 20,000 people have fallen for this checkmate. That's how many games the Lee Chess database picks up here. Smothered mate. Yeah, but yeah, queen e2, I don't think, I don't think is a good move. All right, thanks for the game. Okay, Jan, this is our fifth game against one another. Good luck to you. The hyper-accelerated G4, that is right. All right, let's play it, Kero Khan. Does anyone know what FIDE ratings correspond to Lee Chess? I have seen 1,200 FIDE having 2,300 Lee Chess and 1,500 FIDE being 1,900 on Lee Chess. Yeah, you can probably find some guides out there that indicate like what Lee Chess rapid or classical ratings roughly correspond to FIDE. In my experience, it's really all over the map, but probably there is some rough calculation you can do. Greetings to my opponent. Um, let's play h5. Let's make this spicy. Mm. 
Hmm. Okay, knight a6. I don't want to put the knight here because it blocks my defense. I'm also debating where I should put the dark square bishop, so not committing that yet. Okay, now if I go d4, the knight's going to have to go back to b1. How do I feel about that? I'm not sure, so let's just postpone that decision. Okay. Hmm. Let's go h4. You guys want to see me sacrifice a piece? I know you do. Knight takes g4. Coming up. How many hours did I practice a day at my peak? Oh, yeah. I saw your question from earlier. Um, You know, probably when I was like really actively working on my chess, two to three hours of like quality practice. Like I'm not talking playing blitz online or something, but studying and reflecting on my games, annotating maybe two to three. I, I honestly don't feel like I've ever spent an enormous amount of time like studying chess. I've always been more in the camp that like I, I have improved most from playing and then reflecting seriously on my play. Now, I've read a lot of books and stuff too, but if I were to credit anything, it would be playing a lot, especially from a young age, as what um, for me worked. But caveat behind that, if you're getting into the game a little bit later, like I started playing chess when I was 10, and I was a master by the time I was 15. Like that, that's rare, right? Like even in this day and age, like that's still a rarity. If I were older getting into the game, I'd, I'd approach things differently for sure. I'd probably spend more time absorbing traditional materials, less time playing Blitz and Bullet, which as a kid, like I was still getting better doing that. So it's going to be different for everyone. Okay, this position is dominating, but I'm not sure how to break through. How to fully capitalize here. I can take this rook whenever I want, so I don't feel like I should rush that. I don't know. Castles, maybe? It's castle. White might take here, though. I was thinking about d4 as well. Not going to take that rook yet, though, because it's annoying for white when I... I'm just constantly attacking that rook. <clears throat> okay, now that one I was thinking maybe come here. But then there's bishop f3. All right, all right. Let's play this. Platon says there's a comparison you can find online. Just search for chess rating online versus FIDE. There's an actual graph with stats. Yes, definitely check that out because that's probably the best answer to your question. Okay, we'll take here. Again, like I would really take online ratings with a grain of salt compared to FIDE and you know national ratings. It is it is somewhat all over the map. Seems to me online ratings are a better representation of people's ability these days, right? Just because of the sheer volume of games and players. It's, it's very common nowadays when you go to tournaments to see people who are just vastly underrated, especially kids. We're talking ratings that are several hundred points lower than where they should be. I could trade and take on C2, but I'm trying to find some forced winning line here. I'm going to try to get the rook in this way. Rook G1. Okay. Good defense there. Mm-hmm. Take. Ooh, but now I get this in. And take. Check. Remove this. Okay. 
Thanks for the game, Jan. Complicated. I don't know about the Knight takes G4 decision. I kind of just played that for the memes. But in Blitz, this is hard to defend against as well. Probably not a move I'd make in a classical game, but... I think... Yeah, Queen E1 does look suspicious because your king getting wedged up here. I'm impressed you survived uh, for so long after this. And I might have even been worse at some point because your king situation was pretty dire. Should I go here maybe and then try to come here? That looks obvious in hindsight, but I, don't, I didn't think about that during the game. Yeah, Queen D7 is minus 10. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, pretty good defensive job by you, I think. And with the time situation towards the end, it was up in the air. It was dicey. So thanks for the game. Okay, Dunnock, 1801. Good luck to you. Another Lee Chess patron. Great to see. Good luck. How do you have exactly 50 challenges every time? Well, the um, plugin that I use to accept the random challenges only shows 50, but you'll see when I when I hit the button for a split second up here, it'll show you the true number of challenges, which will be higher than 50. Split second? Yeah, it was 74. So you got to be fast to see it. But they are all there. I think past 50, it just displays 50 on Lee Chess, is my understanding. Good luck, Rocket Buell. Uh, Kawhi says, I want to get a title someday. I got to 2250 Lee Chess in a year of playing. Wow, that's really good. And then took a break for school, and now I'm stuck. Well, that, that's amazing if you get to 2250 after a year. Are you talking uh, Rapid, Blitz? What time control? So there's no chance I will play you? No, there's a chance because the challenges are selected randomly. So if you're one of the 74 you have an equal chance of getting selected when I click on that button. doesn't matter when you challenged. So there's no, we're not going in a specific order here. That's the point of the random, except random challenge button. Twenty two fifty rapid. Wow. How'd you get so good so fast? That's awesome. Now, when you say one year of playing, do you mean like you learned how to move the pieces one year ago and that's all the progress you've made? Or did you like play when you were younger and then have kind of come back to it? That's a very important distinction, I think. Okay, I love this position for white. Black's kind of cramped in this Benoni setup. Now, I can already start thinking about e5. Pretty tempting move. I may do it. e5, take, knight takes, bishop d6, though. Mm, okay, let's play rook e1 first. I suspect black's going to go here. Then we'll park the bishop on h2. How is work with chessable going? Are you facing changes with chess.com takeover? So um, I don't work in chess chessable management. So I haven't been full-time at the company ever. <laughs> but... um. Yeah, it's been many, many years since I've been like in an official management capacity with Chessable. But I still have courses on the site. I still contribute to the site. I'll probably be making something in the future. So obviously, I hope Chessable continues to succeed. But uh, yeah, I imagine the Chessable staff has been undergoing some changes with the Chess.com acquisition. They're part of a much larger organization now. Hello, Osla Papa. Okay, now, what do you guys notice about this position? This should look similar to a game against a high-rated player that I played earlier. Right? And guess what? Black put a piece on the same square that's going to get them in trouble. F4. The knight is caught in the middle of the board. No retreat squares. Everything covered. Again, this is one of the problems with the Benoni setups. 
doesn't make the opening bad, but black is kind of cramped in the Benoni. It's like they have one too many minor pieces for the squares that they want to put it on. So that's how stuff like this can go down. Oh, yeah, Arthur saw it. He said F4 here, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so black will have some compensation because they have strong control of F4 and E5. Oh, but I can take this now. Go take that pawn with tempo. This still might actually be interesting. Like, maybe bishop takes h3 was worth playing there. Could have been an attempt. How many employees are there before you left? I'm not sure, actually. Because I never really left. I just wasn't involved with management to, to begin with. When I was a co-founder, um, obviously at the beginning of Chessable launching, I had... Uh, certain duties and help get the site off the ground. But, <clears throat> you know, Chessable has its own CEO. Even my co-founder, David, David Cramley, um, after a certain point, he was no longer CEO. But it's, it's a big company. It's a big company. Let's take here. And then probably I'll insert this trade before taking the bishop. Yeah, take here. Trade everything off. Go swipe this. And we're up a rook. Should I get rid of the knight? Always tempting to get rid of the knight. Uh, but I think h4 is good. h4, attack this and this. Black does have knight h5, but we're not going to sweat that. Oh, thank you also, Papa. And thank you to my opponent for the game. Yeah, so bishop d7 was the culprit there. Bishop d7 gets black in trouble. I think the position's kind of tough before that, but not impossible to play. I think here, maybe black should go bishop g5. Trying to control that f4 square would have been good. Yeah, and if bishop g5 is played, equal or maybe even slightly better for black, according to the engine. So controlling this square, pretty crucial when that knight is sitting on e5. But this move allowed f4, and that's, that's pretty much over if white plays correctly. So thanks for the game. Papersov, 2149. Let's do it. Let's play b3 in this game. The feared B3. Okay, and my opponent's copying me. I love it. <laughs> Bishop B7. Should I play a gambit here? Okay, we're really turning this into a, a semi-gambit stream. Pretty sure this move is terrible. That's how I have to preface these style of moves. But <laughs> Bishop takes E4. I was going to go Queen G4. That was my plan. But black goes here. Hmm. How do I continue playing this like a gambit? I don't know. I'm just going to go knight c3. I can't find a good way. Defends this. Bishop c4 coming, maybe. Let's play f4 here. Pause to reflect says, wow, you weren't kidding. You have a huge collection of games with commentary on your YouTube channel. Thanks. Yeah, I really do. I have a large YouTube channel. I have 1,700 videos on my YouTube. It's It's wild. So absolutely, and, and most of those videos are like blitz or rapid with commentary. And I've been doing a lot of the rapid games, like 15 plus 10, 15 plus 15 recently. We have a funky position here. Very unusual position. Is black debating knight h5, maybe? Marco says, I mean, I'm watching these streams or big tournament commentaries. I guess indirectly learning theory from there, but never reading Duretsky, modern openings, etc. Yeah, you know, watching streams and commentary at the end of the day, it's ultimately pretty passive learning, right? So that's why I do encourage people to play these longer games and make an effort to annotate your games. Chess is, chess is something that you have to really engage with. 
to learn properly, right? Like you cannot simply study your way to chess success. This is actually where a lot of adults have problems, especially very smart, accomplished adults. I mean, I almost think there's, there's sometimes like a negative correlation between professional success and how you approach chess development. Because some, many people, many adults who have experienced a lot of professional success and are objectively like very bright people, I think they, they believe that they can apply what um, worked for them in their professional lives to a game, especially a game that you have to get better at by a trial and error like chess. And that's the wrong way to approach it. So, yeah, Marco, I, I like your comment kind of distinguishing between various methods of learning and what is and isn't useful. Ooh. Now, I think, again, we're in another situation here, guys, where I might win some material. This one's a little dicier because there's some problems here. But let's find out. Okay, takes. Take this way. There's a check. I'll go here. This is hanging, but I take this. I don't know. I kind of went off on a tangent there, but that's just one thing I've seen, especially from working with a lot of adults, is um, the ones who actually admit that they have to learn chess and approach chess in a way that embraces the beginner's mindset in taking a lot of losses and just getting in there and playing a bunch of games and not being afraid to mess up. They tend to do better than the types who want to feel like they've studied everything before they start playing games. And they want that control. So just my experience on that topic. Ooh, this is getting quite interesting here. I'm tempted to go knight g3 and maybe try to set up some attack on the dark squares. Can I pull that off? Probably king here makes more sense, though, so let's do it. So I have four minor pieces against two. Black has an extra rook and all their pawns intact. But I feel like I'm better here because the, the black king is looking pretty weak. Maluska S asks, Hi, John, are you only accepting 3 plus 0 challenges? Yes, that is correct. 3 plus 0 only, please. Lose your first 50 games as quickly as possible is a well-known proverb in the Go community. Interesting. Oh, speaking of Go, did I see something that um, like one of the top Go AIs actually lost to a human recently? Is that true? That's pretty cool. Let's go here. Don't tell Black that I'm attacking the bishop. Okay. Um, trading my knight. Mixed feelings about that. Let's go here. Okay, so black does have a ton of pawns. Black still has all their pawns remaining. But I, I still think I'm better in this position. I still feel I'm for choice. <laughs> That's kind of wild that black still had all those pawns. <laughs> uh, let's take this. Take. Okay. Paprasov was really fast there at the end. I almost panicked, but I had just a little bit of a buffer to win this game. All right. Thanks for the game. That was an interesting one. Started with B3, B6, and then E4. Does this gambit have a name? Let's find out. Oh, come on. It has to have a better name than Nimzo Larson attacks symmetrical variation. <laughs> I guess E4 itself doesn't have a name. This is just the Nimzo Larson symmetric. Not even close to a novelty. 67,000 Lee Chess games to have reached this position. <laughs> we both get question marks here. It wants you to take the pawn. Yeah, interesting how this went down. 
I thought I was probably better in these complications, but the engine completely disagrees with that. It says, John, you're not better at all. You're much worse, actually. <laughs> so here, it wants you to play knight takes f4. Interesting. Take, and then bishop takes h1 with a very tangled position. I still have two minor pieces, but maybe this pin is annoying. Yeah, the symmetrical blunder variation, that's what we'll call it. And what about that position we get into with minor piece against eight pawns? Slightly better for white, not hugely so. Tiny, tiny edge. I don't think I've ever seen that, where this many captures and this open of a board on one side in like a non-blundering, all-over-the-shop type situation leads to this where the other side has all their pawns. I'm sure I could come up with some examples if I thought about it, but <laughs> it's pretty interesting. All right, thanks for the game. I got a 63% accuracy on that game, and my opponent got a 59% accuracy. Decided by the clock. Okay, Pond Duam, good luck to you. This is our second game against one another. Let's play E6, French Invitation, maybe looking for a Dutch. Play F5. Where are my Dutch players at? Either the opening or the country. <laughs> okay, castle. D6. Okay, this is all pretty standard stuff. Yeah, and here, um, I think I go knight C6. Queen E8's also played a lot, but I think you start with knight C6. Mm hmm. Bishop f4. Or actually, I'm, I think knight e4 was the move. I should have played knight e4. I should know this because I have a student who plays this line for black. And knight e4 is the way to start here. I apologize to that student. <laughs> okay, but this looks more normal now. So this pawn is under attack. I can play d5 or I can take on d4. Which shall it be? Let's, let's take on d4 because I think... I think this is a pretty good opportunity. D5 was maybe not so bad either, but I'm going to take and then play E5, I'm thinking. Raven Sturt plays Queen E8. Yeah, we'll take a look at this position in the database because I think Knight E4 is the, the main line, but it's possible there are other move orders. John, have you made any... Videos using the advantage of YouTube shorts. I see that shorts have become popular. I have not made any shorts myself, no. So, no. Maybe at some point I'll look into it. Yeah, YouTube is really pushing the shorts hard. The TikTok style stuff. The opening I have the worst results against is the Scandinavian. Ah. I might have to offer you some advice on that, Duffman. <laughs> Vertical video is so bad, though. Oh, yeah, with, with the shorts. Yeah, that's definitely not to everyone's liking. Could take here, but I think I'm going to retreat the knight. I like this piece. Two threats here. Yeah, some chess channels have, have gone absolutely ballistic with the shorts in terms of their subscriber count. So I think it is a pretty good way. Could have played this too, but let's go D5 first. <clears throat> if, you're, if you're purely trying to grow subscribers on YouTube, it's probably a good method. I just don't know about like the quality of the subscribers, as in will they watch your long stuff? That seems debatable, and from the... The evidence I've seen so far, the answer is like largely no. Dr. Spot says, I unsub from channels that spam shorts. Mm. Yeah, shorts too, um, in terms of monetization, are pretty bad. I think shorts pay something like a few cents for every thousand views that you get. And they rack up so many views if they get popular. 
Um, that's probably why. Like, <laughs> there's not unlimited advertiser revenue. But I think most people who make shorts, like, they like the exposure that comes from them. Let's go here. Take this now. I'm happy to see E4 because that means white can't challenge my pawn in the center. So this should be pretty secure. YouTube shorts are also going to be monetized. Yeah, they are already. Um, that was a recent thing that YouTube did. Let's go, hmm, queen h5. It seems like a duchy type move. Let's do it. I feel like YouTube shorts are aimed at hyper bullet players. <laughs> All right, let's sack the exchange. Get that light square play around the white king. This is going to be decided on the clock, though. Put a stop to any pawn advancing here. Mm. All right. Thank you, pawn. Appreciate it. Let's go back to that, that branching point here. Take a look at this. Master's database. I love looking at the master's database when just trying to get the lay of the land in a position. Yeah, so you can see here, um, knight e4 is one of the most popular moves. However, whoever said queen e8, you are correct. Queen e8 is actually played slightly more often than knight e4. 575 games to 446. Also a5 popular. So yeah, those seem to be the big three moves here. This, this, this. So some classical Dutch theory. This is the classical variation with the bishop on e7. There's also the Leningrad where you fianchetto the bishop. And uh, there's the Stonewall too, which is where you put the deep on on d5 and usually c6 thereafter. Yeah, interesting. I, I bet this is not so accurate because of d5. Yeah, the quick d5. Busting things up here been played by some good players but yeah I, I don't see any gms playing this for black okay thanks for the game hey what's up k buck b shout out to the buck b clan let's play e4 against k buck b i feel like i usually play d4 and knight f3 against you if i'm white so let's play it like this Yes, it is. Buck be in the house. Good luck. Play some Italian game. Yeah. Twelve times a charm. That's right. How much of the mainline Italian do you know, Buck Bee? Let's see. Have we played this before? I feel like we might have played this in the past, too. We'll play some Greco Gambit. I love this variation. This is one of the first lines that I actually studied in depth in chess. Okay, castles. That's an interesting one. It leaves the knight hanging, but black does have d5 at that point. I feel like I looked at this recently. Yeah, I think I should take. And then... Oh, I can't remember. I looked at this recently because a student of mine played into this. I want to say it was like knight, knight g5 at this point is what I was supposed to do. And then take and like queen c2. I think that might be it, actually. Let's try it. You try to weaken the black king side somehow. So I'm, I'm going to attempt this. And if stockfish vindicates me, then that means the old brain is still working. But yeah, castling there for buck B is, is pretty unusual. Usually black takes on C3. And taking with a bishop is the best way to take if you're going to capture. All right, take here. So I think the point is, although black has the bishop pair and a better structure, black's king is kind of feeling the heat at this point. Right, they weaken the dark squares a little bit. D5 is a threat. These are awkward. Oh, thank you, Pondawa. Pondawa, my last opponent, just showed up in the chat. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. 
All right, so if d5, knight e5, is that the idea? Probably. What else could I play here? Rook e1. I think I like d5, though. Let's go with that. Mm hmm. Probably take this. Or do I want to go queen h4? Queen h4, knight takes f3, though. Maybe queen d4. Queen d4 actually strikes me as an interesting move. Let's do that, because I would really like to prevent Buck B's bishop from getting to this long diagonal and helping the king. I feel like if I take, I'm helping, helping black do that. Tricky, tricky. Mm-hmm, good move. Good one. Maybe now I have to capture. It may be forced. All right, let's take at this point. Which way will Buck B take? Takes that way. All right, threaten checkmate. At least now the queen is blocking the bishop from coming back. So although you could argue black has gained a move, the bishop is perhaps less well-placed. I don't know, though. This is just very interesting how this is going down. Let's play here. We'll give the B2 pawn. Complicated. I'm going to try for bishop d4. Possibly even rook d4 is interesting, but I think bishop d4. I can see this shaping up as follows. Bishop g4, bishop d4, bishop takes, rook takes, the threat of rook takes g4, and mating on h7. Not going to happen, but interesting. Um, Let's go here now. And this stops queen g4 as well. And I might be in a position soon to threaten this. There's also rook f4. Also, ooh, maybe rook f4 and then uh, knight e4 is good. Let's do that. Give the pawn here, but I'm going to pivot to this square. I think that g4 move is also tempting, but let's do it this way. Coming down to the wire. Buck B sees my plan. Still go here. F5. Seems kind of loosening, but probably the best move. Yep. All right, all right. Uh, let's go queen g5. What's going on? Complicated position still. Pinning. It just feels like I should land a fork or some tactic here. <laughs> this, is, this is kind of a minefield for Buck B to navigate. Like queen f6 is a very natural move that loses. I mean, look at this move. But this is probably even better. Yeah, let's take here. I don't know. Maybe, maybe black can take and try to run with the king. If I go rook h4... Um, there was a possible punishment there. Huh. Just a time scramble. <laughs> I, I went for the dirty flag. True Beerus is correct. It says flagging certain for one of us. That was interesting. I think you defended that pretty well. Very well. Let's see. At this point, what should I do? Is this move better? I don't think knight takes h5 is actually the best move here. Ah, it is. But the computer says you're, you're doing okay. It says you're fine. Yeah, Buckby defended really well. Oh, rook g4. It didn't click that that was an option at this point. Uh-huh. Because from a few moves back, it's hard to see that you might have rook g4 as an idea. I was looking at rook e4 in a lot of cases. Rook e4. But I actually wasn't sure if this happens, what I would have. Here, here, here. The computer says 
play calmly, bring up another piece. Interesting. Yeah, so again, the main line in this variation is black playing bishop takes c3. It's kind of been known that that's one of the principal tries. And I was really tapping my memory banks here from a week or two ago. Yeah, knight eg5, top move of the engine. Still got it, guys. <laughs> and it leads to an advantage for white. I think mostly because black has to weaken their king. I'm glad I remember that. But even still, I mean, really interesting game. Definitely, for me, the interest, most interesting game I've had today. So it wants me to take here and play rook e1. Bishop g7. Bishop f4. Developing, attacking c7. Interesting. I think you play great, Buck B. Just a complicated three-minute game. Lots of ideas for both sides. You were better at, at some point. But um, that's 3-0 blitz for you. Thanks for playing E4 finally. I know that stuff. Oh, sure. My pleasure. Yeah, that's interesting. Back to my roots. <laughs> Our accuracies were pretty brutal in this game. Probably because of the end sequence. <laughs> Just exchanging... Double question mark moves, all that red. I got a 56% accuracy and Buck B at a 54. <laughs> We're both failing. All right, let's play two more games, guys. We're coming up on the end of the stream. Aman Amaskinen. Aman Amaskinen. Is this like Aman of, of chess bra fame and also Magnus, like the Maskiniskin? Is it like a Amalgamation of their names. We'll play a Terash. Amalgamation. So in this variation, you can send your knight to e2 or f3. One of the two. I'll play it to e2 because I'm a little more familiar with that. That's Magnus's Twitch username. Yeah, I think it's a little bit different than this. But yeah, he does stream on Twitch with some, some very similar username. Okay, now this line's interesting. So taking on f6 is by far the most common here. But do you guys know about this variation, knight f4? This leads to some fascinating play. It's a sharp move. It threatens this and also queen h5. Black can easily lose here if they don't know the line. If they know the line, we're likely to get into a, in, um, an end game or a queenless middle game, maybe, um, where white's probably a little bit better, but it's, it's unbalanced. Okay, queen e7. I think I've actually faced this move before, and I know that this is not supposed to be good. So let's go check. Now, if black goes king d8, what do I actually do? Is knight g6, black has queen f7 pinning. That's maybe okay for white, but on king d8, I might actually just want to play something like knight f3. Might be better. Black does play it. Yeah, I don't know. Here, here, the fact that my queen is undefended is kind of annoying. I guess I could just drop the queen back, queen h4. Nah, I'm going to bring this knight up first. I feel a little better with this thrown in because you want to guard d4. Free f7 pawn or h7 pawn. Yeah. Could have thought about that too. Looks weird to put yourself in the pin, but maybe. You should have played the Evans Gambit. Oh, in the last game against Buckby? Yeah, I did have a chance for the Evans, didn't I? Maskaniskin. Maskinissen means the machinist in Nor Norwegian. Oh, interesting. The machinist. I was always wondering about that. And I, I like how Magnus, when he streams, he refuses to use a profile picture. <laughs> so again, here, here. Uh, let's, let's just castle. 
Exactly. Black's king is trying to run away. G5. Hmm. Lashing out. Now, I had a couple things in mind against that. Maybe take here. Again, I could do this, but queen f7 will be the answer. I think taking here is probably good. Hit the queen. If black takes with the knight, queen takes, eight, queen takes g5. Magnus is a boomer. <laughs> I mean, he is past 30. He's getting, you know, year or two past 30 now. Hopefully in this day and age, that doesn't quite qualify as a boomer because I'm in trouble. If so, which way should I take this pawn? If I take with the knight, black has knight takes d4, but then I can maybe go here. I'm going to do that because that looks nice and active. Black is trying to hold this together, but it's tough. I would not want to be in black shoes right now. Knight takes d5. I don't think knight takes d5 was working, right? Because that's always defended here. Unless you had a different idea in mind, Gad. Magnus was born in 1990. That is correct. I think a number of strong chess players were born in 1990, actually. I think MVL was also born that year. Let's give a check. Um, don't see a mate. Knight takes d5 is interesting, but doesn't doesn't mate or anything. Oh, how about queen e8? Let's go queen e8. I'm kind of running out of time, so let's just threaten checkmate here. Mm, it's not completely over. Well, black blundered mate, but had black played... Let's say um, bishop c5 here. Yeah, actually, bishop c5 might just be a good move at this point. Is that the best move? It is. Still plus three and a half, plus four. Oh, yeah, this was a rated game, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> queen e8, probably not the greatest move. Wants me to play rook takes c8 and then queen e8. Uh-huh. I was getting confused with all the capture possibilities. Probably this, in hindsight, is simpler. But yeah, any, anyways, this variation, pretty fascinating. Uh, queen e7. Looks like knight f3 is actually the preferred move here. Didn't know that. That has been played in the Masters database. Not queen h5, though, because queen h5, queen f7. Ah. And you allow bishop g6. This is kind of like the main version of this gambit, or of this line. You allow all this to happen, and then you take here. And black threatens knight c2. They're going to scoop up this pawn on e5. You got this cluster of pawns. This is actually significantly better winning for black, according to the computer. So usually in this line, knight f4. Black plays knight takes d4 directly, which, which defends this. And then it allows queen h5. It's a bizarre-looking variation. King e7. Uh, and then you can go knight g6 or e takes f6. I don't know if it matters much. e takes f6, knight takes, knight g6, fork. h takes g6, queen takes h8. And then king f7, guarding the g6 pawn. And if we pause here, we see black is down in exchange. They do have one pawn for it. Lots of games have been played from here with reasonable results for black. White wins more often, but reasonable results. And one of the main ideas is, let's say white castles, black plays e5, and then they try to go bishop f5, look to trade the bishops and straighten out their pawns. And this pawn mass in the center is intimidating, and white's queen is kind of sidelined. White's coordination isn't great here for the time being. So this is a fascinating variation. That's how it usually goes after that knight f4 move. But also remember that queen e7, you don't play queen h5. You actually just want to go here. And what's the reasoning if they go for the pawn? Okay, then you play queen h5 with the fork. And if knight f7, you castle, and evidently white has fantastic compensation here. 
makes sense. French theory is crazy. Yeah, there's some serious theory in this opening, as with most every mainline opening these days. Okay, let's play one more game. And you guys know what game it is. It's the blindfold game. Yes. I'm undefeated today, so far. <laughs> Who's going to take me down? Kiwi. All right, good luck to you. 1748. I have the white pieces. Let's play D4. Your Lee Chess is not glitching right now. You're seeing what I see, which is just this blank board with the move highlights. Also, the moves on the side. It's not a true blindfold game, but it's close enough <laughs> for our purposes. If you want to see the actual pieces, go ahead and log in on Lee Chess and um, check out the board. Okay, we're going to get a King's Indian defense by transposition. Bishop G4. All right, let's break the pin. This variation's playable for black. I think I should be a little bit better, though. Let's go h3. Pre-move the capture here. Black does take. Now, usually they put a pawn here, here. C5 or E5. So don't, don't be surprised to see one of those moves. I'll go D5. I like what I'm working with already. I have the bishop pair. Maybe I can get aggressive with these pawns. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to play G4 here. We're going to advance. Try to hinder the F5 move. Cramp Black's position. Ooh, C6. Hmm. Let's ignore that and just keep pushing on the king side. H4. I'm going to forego castling. Try to attack. I want to work against you. Can I distract and misinform you somehow in the chat? Yes, feel free. That would be a good challenge. You throw out random squares and moves and make me question where the pieces are. Am I going to upload the stream later? It should be automatically on YouTube after the stream is over. So those of you who are watching on YouTube, you should just be able to play it back immediately. Also, it'll be saved in the Twitch video archive too for a certain number of days. Okay, Bishop D2. Yeah, let's drop, drop that back. Hit the queen. All right. So now that pawn on c4 is undefended, but do I really care about that pawn? I don't think I should. I'm going to keep attacking here. Let's go h5. Feel free to capture that pawn if you want. Knight comes back to f6, so challenging. Ooh. Guys, I see... I see a potential win. Oh my. I think 97 is checkmate. Oh my. Because <laughs> black has the king on g8. They're wedged in here with the rook on f8, the bishop on h8, and that pawn on h6 taking this away. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for the game. Uh, to my opponent, Kiwi. A little unfortunate for you at the end. I kind of felt like with your queen dancing around, you were taking some liberties on that e7 square. So This probably wins because you can take my knight, right? But then I'm going to insert this capture with an attack on your rook. So 100% accuracy, not quite, 92. <laughs> what was the one in accuracy? Oh, I didn't like g4. Didn't like g4. Yeah, so in this variation, if you play this again, Kiwi, Kiwi, you can play this way, but they usually go knight fd7, believe it or not. Knight fd7. And then they try to play c5 with the bishop unveiled. It's an interesting line. But yeah, I think the way you played it, you probably just don't have a lot to show for having given up the bishop pair. This is a typical idea trying to go for f5, but. I think it's a little misplaced here. All right. 
Thank you guys all for tuning in today. This was Lee Chess Plays. Thanks to Lee Chess, as always. Check out all the features. You can do puzzles. Remember with puzzles, you can use the um, themed puzzles if you want. I've been mentioning this in recent streams. There are so many good themed puzzles here. Check them out. Also, check out the study feature. So many studies that you can learn from. And uh, you can also create your own study and import games, positions, whatever you like, and save it all in one place. It's like an online running diary of your analysis. All right, thanks again. Hope you all have a great week. Thanks to our YouTube viewers and Twitch viewers. We're sending the uh, Twitch raid off to Vampire Chicken. I'll see you guys again next week. Take care, everyone.